Hey friends, welcome back to Farm Bread. I'm Kate, and today I am gonna show you how I make some delicious rustic baguette twists. They are pretty simple to make, along with a lot of the recipes I make. Today's Monday, and I just found out that we don't have school tomorrow because we have are expecting a storm tonight. So I am gonna be using a starter with where it's at. Now this starter is not perfect, I'll show you. Um, I typically have it a little bit more bubbly than this, but I looked at the top and it definitely looks bubbly on the inside. So I'm gonna go with it and we'll see how they turn out. Um, we're using all purpose flour and not bread flour. So not as much gluten in the flour, but that's okay. Um, I'm pretty confident that even though the starter's not in perfect bubbly active phase, it will still work. I'll probably eat one loaf and then um, freeze the rest until Saturday morning. And then I will um, let them thaw out on the counter at room temperature. Um, I've frozen these baguettes before and um, they freeze really well. So that's definitely something you can do because when you make them, you don't make just one. Single batch makes three, if that makes sense. And then if I double the batch, it makes six. Um, I also use a baking stone for this and a different technique in the oven. So I will show you all of that. Again, it's not too complicated. It's just, there's a little bit more to the baking process because I'm not using a cloche, um, but I'll show you all of that. It's simple, it's easy. Um, and again, I just love the art of making the complicated simple, right? That's what this is all about. Um, so follow along. I hope you enjoy it. If you decide to make it too, I would love to hear and um, hear your results. All right. Thanks so much. Let's get started. Okay. So I am going to put in the recipe calls for 50 grams of your active bubbly starter. What I am going to do is add in a hundred because I'm going to try to double the recipe. Now you can kind of see uh, if I can show this, this is still pretty, pretty light and airy on the inside. So I'm not too worried about this. And if it doesn't turn out, it doesn't turn out. <laughs> but I'm, I'm pretty confident this should be okay. All right. So we're gonna do 100. Okay, I'm gonna zero this out and we're gonna add 360 grams of cool water. So that would be for one batch. I'm gonna double that. So that would be 720. Perfect. All right, now I'm gonna mix this up. and it calls for 400 grams of all-purpose flour. I'm gonna put in 800. This is an organic all-purpose flour that I have. I ran out of all-purpose flour. I'm at 788. So I'm just gonna add a smidge of bread flour just to get up to that 800. Now, he actually calls for whole wheat flour. This is fresh milled whole wheat flour and 40 grams. So I'm gonna knock that up to 80. And last but not least, we're gonna add in some sea salt. I actually use pink Himalayan salt. I prefer it. Um, calls for nine grams. I'm going to do 18. I already zeroed out my scale too, just so you know. Maybe 20. I did 20. <laughs> Can you put that back for me, hon? My son Miles is here. Okay, so I'm going to take this off the scale. And now I am going to stir it up. Again, I'm using my Danish dough whisk, which I absolutely love. You can see with smaller batches like this, um, how nicely it, they mix together with this whisk. Single batches, it's like 
perfect. Use a little bit of elbow grease like around the sides to get everything off. Try to incorporate everything. Okay. That's pretty good. That's to a nice point where now I can actually just go in with my hands and uh, and then just combine, make sure everything's combined with my hand, just for that final mix. Get it off my dough whisk. Okay. This is, I did a pretty good job with the dough whisk, I have to say. So. Um, yeah, this is taking minimal mixing with my hand. Good. Just make sure all the flour is evenly distributed within the liquids so that we don't have any pockets of just flour or any areas that are just too wet. There we go. Scrape the sides. Try to get it off your hand. Now, what I'm gonna do is cover this bowl and I am going to let it sit for about 30 minutes. And then I'm gonna come back, I'm gonna shape it into a ball and cover it again for its ball prize. All right, just had dinner and now I am going to open up my dough. I'm gonna kind of fold it into kind of like a semi-smooth mass, like a ball. And then I am just gonna let it um, set and go right into its bulk rise. All right, here we go. So you can see how the dough looks right now. Try not to stand with a shadow for you. Um, still a little bit sticky, but you'll see once we start to kind of form this into a ball, um, you'll see how it is gonna be a lot stretchier and how the glutens have rested. All right, there we go. Just stretch it up. Stretch it up. Yep, it's stretchy. That initial um, mix I did with my hands, it definitely didn't look like that. Isn't that cool? That was so fascinating to me. <laughs> All right, I'll just keep stretching it up and uh, get this into a ball. It's definitely um, a little wet. So definitely want to make sure we get this nice and into a nice ball shape. There we go. Look at that. Let's see how smooth that's starting to look. This looks great. I hope I'm holding this so you can see it. All right, so we're just about there. You can really see how smooth this is getting. It's looking really beautiful. And again, friends, I mean, this is flour, salt, water and starter. I mean, how amazing is sourdough? I just love it. Okay, I think we're good. I'm going to let this do its thing in our bulk rise for 12 to 18 hours. I'll come back tomorrow morning and we will go from there. All right, have a great night, friends. Good morning. All right, welcome back, friends. The dough has risen. Um, I think it's at that point where I am going to start to enter the next phase um, where we're going to shape the the baguettes. So um, the dough rose at about, let's see, what does it say? It's about 73 degrees Fahrenheit. So roughly that's what the light was above. Now the stove is probably a little cooler. So I would say the dough temperature, the temperature in the room was probably around seven, between 70 and 72 for the dough to rise in, um, just for your reference. But yes, um, it looks like it has doubled, if not maybe tripled in size. So I will show you what it looks like inside of the bowl right now, and then we'll get to it, okay? All right, my little thermometer. And then I will 
show you. So it's definitely, oh, we've got some great little air bubbles in here. And you can see, oh, look at that big one. Um, this looks great. So this is probably, gosh, definitely doubled, possibly tripled in size. So I didn't go the full 18 hours. I went about 15 hours. It's 930. So yes, it's been about 15 hours. So you um, have an idea of what your dough should look like. Uh, now we are going to flip it out onto the surface. I'm going to use a lot of flour to um, flip it out onto because this is a little bit stickier of a dough to work with. Again, I'm going to actually sprinkle a lot of flour. So turn this out. Let's see. The recipe says to fold the dough in half like a book. Okay, so that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna try to fold this in half. I'm actually gonna stretch it out so it's kind of lengthwise for me. Make sure that, yeah, okay. And then we're gonna fold it out in half. Whoop, bloop, like a book. There we go. Now we're just gonna let this rest for about 10 to 15 minutes. I am just going to cover it with a towel. I love these flower sack towels. So the recipe says, meanwhile, you can line a sheet pan with parchment paper, dust it with flour and preheat your oven to 450. So I will preheat my oven. I am going to use a baking stone instead of a sheet pan because I have one. If you don't have one, just use a sheet pan with parchment paper. Um, so no worries there, but I will show you what I do with my baking stone. Um, that's going to be, at least I think it helps with the beautiful crust of the baguettes. Okay, so I'm preheating my oven. It's set to 450. I've got my baking stone here and then underneath it I have a pan. So I'm going to be pouring water into this pan to create some moisture during the bake. Um, but what's most important is that I have my baking stone in the oven as the oven preheats. So you don't ever want to preheat your oven and then put a baking stone in. Now the dough has rested. What I'm going to do is take the towel off. I'm just going to cut this in half because I did double the batch or I should say I doubled the recipe. So I'm gonna separate it in half. Bench scrapers come in really handy when the dough is especially wet. Um, and then I'll work with one uh, bat, one half at a time. I am going to separate this into three parts, trying to get, and it, these three parts are gonna turn into your baguette. So you try to get them to be fairly even in size. So. Let's see, this side looks a little bit thicker. So there's one. Two, three. Okay. It's okay. Okay, so we have those three done. Now I'm going to take this other loaf. Maybe I'll create some more room for myself. Move these over. Now remember, these aren't your traditional baguettes. These are like a simple way to make delicious baguettes, okay? I guess traditional baguettes can be fairly difficult. So I'm gonna stick with the simple. <laughs> and I have given these away to friends for a little treat and hosted dinners with them and everybody loves them. So I'm just again kind of adding a little bit more flour. Okay so we've got six baguettes here, six dough, right? So now what I will do is shape them. Essentially we're just going to kind of twist. They're called baguette twists. 
So we're just gonna start twisting each one. And you just kind of gently, like a little corkscrew, if you will, start at the top and move your way down. So instead of scoring, you get this twisted action, which kind of emulates that scoring, right? Cute, huh? Okay, so I'm gonna finish the rest of these and then tell you where we go from there. Sometimes we get some crazy little shapes and whatnot in here, but I think that's what makes it really fun. So I'm gonna sprinkle with a little bit more flour now that I've twisted. Now what I'm going to do is actually, before I cover and let them rest, transfer them over to a parchment sheet. Now this is a little bit different because what I'm going to do is have them rise. We'll have them rise for about 15 to 20 minutes on the parchment sheet. And then I'm going to transfer that entire sheet over to our baking stone. So right now I'm just going to gently lift up each, each baguette twist. and put it onto our baking sheet. Now it's important that you have plenty of flour because at one point I am going to remove the baguette twists from this parchment paper. So you definitely don't want them to like stick at all. Now, if you're noticing that your baguettes are starting to lose their beautiful corkscrew shape at all, just keep twisting them. No problem. I'm just gonna keep moving this over so you can see how I'm placing them on the sheet. I have this sheet kind of cut out to fit the bottom of, of a pan, which is gonna help me to get the baguettes onto the stone. And I'll show you, it sounds kind of confusing, but essentially, Lifting up a parchment paper with baguettes on it is not going to be the easiest thing. So I put it on top of a pan and then I just slide it off the pan onto the baking stone. That is pretty straightforward. Just make sure again you've got enough flour so you can move them. See how they're just sliding over fairly easily? Parchment paper also helps in that because it's obviously nice and slick. Okay. I'll get this last one. Make sure I've got enough flour down. There we go. I'm just gonna give a little additional twist. Make sure they have a beautiful shape. There we go. All right, so now you can see, let me see, should I move this? There we go. These are our beautiful baguettes, our twists. So now I'm gonna cover these. Oven is still preheating to 450 degrees. I'm gonna cover these for about 15 to 20 minutes. And then once they're ready, I'll put them onto my sheet pan and then we will put them in the oven on the baking stone. Okay, so the baguettes are ready to go in the oven. I have, well, you can see first that they haven't risen too much. They've risen a little bit. They definitely look a little bit puffier, right? Some of these twists are starting to kind of blend into the dough a little bit more. So it doesn't look as rigid. But yeah, they look great. Okay, so what I did was I, during that rise time, I actually put them on top. See how I have a baking sheet flipped over. So they're on top of this. And what I'm gonna do is just slide this entire sheet right on top of the baking stone. And then I'm also going to give it about 10 to 15 minutes and then remove this parchment paper from underneath them so that they can bake directly on the baking stone. And I'll show you when I do that as well. So right now I'm gonna hand my camera over to my daughter and she's gonna be my cameraman as we do this. Okay. 
as my daughter corrected me, she's not a cameraman, she's a camera woman. All right, so we're gonna open this up. Can you show them the baking stone? I did wanna mention what an important thing to do is make sure that your baking stone has flour on top of it so that when we do remove the parchment paper, the there will be a little bit of flour on top. Okay. I'm gonna slide this out a little bit, make it easier for me. Not too far, I don't want it to tip. over a little bit so it's not touching I'll push this back in and now I'm just gonna add a little bit of water to this pan down here this is gonna create a little bit of moisture There we go. I am gonna now reduce the oven to 425. So make sure you make a note of that. We're reducing the oven to 425. So I put the baguettes in the oven and they are going to bake for roughly 35 minutes. In the past, I've upped it to 38 minutes. What I've done is set a timer for 35 minutes and I will check them. We want them to be a beautiful golden brown. In the meantime, at about the 10 minute mark, I'm going to spritz some water over top of the baguettes. And I'm also gonna check that pan below to see if the water's evaporated. Okay, it's been about a little over 10 minutes, maybe 12 minutes. Wow, like, can you show them how beautiful these look? They're rising up. We do have some water still in the bottom, so I am, yeah, I'm just gonna leave that there. What I'm gonna do is try to remove the parchment paper easily. Yep. Again, this is only because I want to use a baking stone. You don't have to use a baking stone. I do like the, the end product of the baking stone with the beautiful texture and the crust, I think is really beautiful when you can use the baking stone and a little spritzer. So now what I'm gonna do is just use a little spray bottle with water and spray the tops of the loaves. This is where you get that beautiful little bubbling of the crust. Okay, so now I will let them continue to bake. I will come back in probably 10 more minutes and do another little spritzer and check the pan to see if there's enough water in the bottom or if it's all evaporated. If it's evaporated, I'll refill it um, and we'll go from there. We have about 20 minutes to go. Okay. All right, so I'm back. You wanna show them how they're looking? You can see they're getting a beautiful golden brown color. Thank you, Blake. There we go. They're looking really good. We're just gonna do another little spritz. This is the um, what helps to aid in the blistering. I was looking for that word and I couldn't remember it, but the blistering of the skin of the crust. So when you do a little spritz of water, it will help with that also. That's why we put some water in the pan below to create some moisture in the oven. All right, and then when we come back, they should be done. Okay, the buzzer just went off. So um, a couple of things. I did uh, add on three minutes, so I gave it 38 minutes in total. Um, and also I noticed that the ends that were further into the oven were getting a little bit browner than the ends that were closer to us. So I went ahead and at that, um, and at that mo like when I added on three minutes, that's when I kind of rotated each loaf so that they would get a little bit of a more even bake. I spritzed them again as well, and now I'm going to take them out. Hopefully they'll be a nice, beautiful golden color. Yep, all right. So that's one. If you want an even darker golden color, 
by all means, you can keep them in the oven longer. I think this is kind of a nice, a nice color. And at this point, you can probably see that texturing I was talking about, like a little bit of that blistering that we get from, okay, that's, that's close enough, right? that we get from adding that spritz of water. So here are our final baguettes. So what I'll do is I'll let them cool on this rack for a few minutes. And if you're like me, you cannot resist fresh baked bread out of the oven. So I will open up one and knowing myself, put some butter on it. And I will show you what the crumb looks like on the inside. But I think these turned out really nicely. All right, so we can't resist. We wanna go in right away. Blake picked out this baguette. In fact, I will tend to ooh, just break them apart. Let me show you. Can you see that crumb? A beautiful crumb. Oh, it's hot still. It's so hot. But you see how we have some nice, it's airy. We've got some beautiful sourdough bubbles in there. Um, but it's a really nice inner crumb. But a really like airy, beautiful loaf. And you can pull this apart too. You don't need to cut it with a knife. I typically will just kind of rip rip it apart. See how beautiful that is? Oh, it's so hot though. There you go. Let's just add some butter to that crumb. Oh, delicious. All right, Blake, what do you think? Is it good? Yeah. I know it's hot, right? Nice and soft on the inside, a nice outer crunchy shell, huh? Good. All right. So yeah, we've already eaten about half a loaf, maybe a little bit more, it's gonna be gone soon, it's so good. But now that I can hold it, I wanted to give you a closer look to see how beautiful this crumb is. I mean, just look how airy and light and fluffy it is. Got some beautiful sourdough holes. And then also um, this nice and crunchy crumb where you can just rip it apart and it's got this beautiful, nice crunch to it. So good. So there you have it. These are our beautiful rustic baguettes, our rustic sourdough baguettes um, with a twist, right? It's an easy approach to making sourdough baguettes um, where you're not slaving away for hours and you still have an amazing end product. Thanks so much for watching. As always, please like and subscribe if you're enjoying this content. It helps me to know what you like and what you don't like. Um, also add comments. I'm always happy to respond and share any feedback or additional thoughts and also welcome your feedback too. Um, I am hoping to post videos a little bit more frequently. I thoroughly love making breads and so I'm trying to figure out how to fit them all into my, my schedule. But um, I was thinking coming up, I really want to make one of my favorites, which is a roasted garlic sourdough. It is to die for. I don't know if you like garlic, but I love garlic and I really love roasted garlic. So putting roasted garlic into something that I also adore, which is bread, um, is just amazing. Have it as an appetizer with cheese, have it sliced, have a cheese on toast, have it with a uh, fried egg on top, you name it. It is a wonderful loaf of bread. So that I hope is gonna be my next loaf that I make for you. So stay tuned for that. And I've got a lot more coming down the pipeline as well. So again, thank you so much for all of your support and your comments and feedback so far. It really helps motivate me to keep this going as much as I can and um, keep making bread. All right, thanks friends, have a great day.